Okay, so we've got a 55 degree day here in New Hampshire. Uh, I think that's the first one for 2019. So spring fever is on. I think I'm going to take my chances, remove the snowblower here. Then uh, I've got a little bit of a challenge. This could be kind of uh, funny at times. Uh, but I'm going to try to put the uh, loader on. Uh, problem being, my loader is on a dolly right now, so that it can be kept in the garage. And my garage is about four inches too short to fit the tractor completely in. So I'm going to do a lot of handwork, uh, using cinder blocks, moving things around. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, when I had this delivered, um, about a month and a half ago, they used two tractors to do it. Uh, this one I had set up at the dealership by putting on the snowblower unit so I'd get the practice time in. Uh, when they delivered, they delivered this course and they had another tractor that they just came up, dropped the uh, loader off just inside the garage here and then I had to devise a plan on how I was going to move it around. Um, so, I know uh, from what I've heard anyways and from uh, talking with a few techs, uh, these loaders come off very easily. Um, no matter kind of where you are uh, with respect to having somewhat even ground, but coming or putting it back on is the difficult part. You really do need a level, flat surface. So I'm going to try to see if I can actually put this on while it's on the dolly that I made. Um, I don't know if it's going to be possible. The dolly certainly isn't going to hold a ton of weight, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Uh, if I feel like I'm stressing the dolly out too much, then I'm going to have to come up with a different plan. Probably take the loader, put a cinder block underneath, get the wheel, the dolly out of there, and then get it to level of ground and see if I can and hook it up that way. Uh, could be a very interesting project. Uh, first one of the year. Um, I'm hoping that I don't need to pull this thing out again. I do have a uh, back blade so I can scrape. I'll have the bucket. So if we do get any dustings of snow, the, the long range forecast at least shows like each day it gets uh, at least into the 30s if not 40s after a uh, cold night and possible snow. So I'm going to bank on that because I really would like to put the uh, loader on. I have a grapple showing up here probably within a week uh, and I'd just like to get used to it. So come along for the ride let's see how we do. So the first thing we ought to uh look at here is I've kind of got some of the things I may need to start doing my little project here. Uh, I got my rag. I've got some uh, work gloves. Brought a couple extras just in case. Uh, these ones are pretty good though. They get a nice grip onto them. Um, I can usually get a few applications out of them. And I've got my grease to uh, hit the hit the fittings. Um, my plan, hopefully it's going to work this way, is to put the snowblower away for the season. Um, I've got a couple of conflicting ways of doing this, but uh, I'm going to grease all the fittings here. Uh, my uh, dealer told me that, you know, he packed these things really good with grease. Um, he said just uh, hit up every storm or two the grease fittings that are on the ends here um, and not to worry about the ones that are on the actual auger itself. Uh, he said those we packed up good and I said okay but you know I've, I've heard at the end of a season to hit those up pretty good and, and really hit everything up just uh, because of the course of the winter and the snow and then the melting that water can get trapped in there and um, obviously I don't want that sitting in there. I guess it would dry up eventually, um, but I don't want to cause any 
any particles or rust or anything to be in there. So I was kind of told that a good idea would be to uh, go ahead and grease everything so that, you know, if there is any water in there, that it gets pushed out uh, with the grease. So that's going to be uh, what I'm going to do. Um, the other thing is, I've probably only used this since I took delivery on it like a month and a half ago. Probably only used this uh, snowblower about six times. Um, however, a little bit later, I'm going to, on a, on a good painting day, I'll probably paint all the, the spots that are missing um, paint now from just daily use and getting down near the end of the driveway where there's sand. Um, but I'll, I'll spray some paint in there, uh, you know, buff some stuff down first, spray some paint, and then I'll probably change the uh, gear oil in this. Uh, just as they're new and they're working out, I guess you can get lots of shards of uh, metal in there. So I'll, I'll drain that. It's not a very expensive thing, and uh, it's pretty simple to do. Um, you know, you remove this little nut or bolt, whatever it is, um, and then you can remove a piece on the top here so that, you know, you get that little airflow to help, to help it drain. Then uh, once that's drained out, uh, you actually fill from the top here. And once you kind of start seeing the hydraulic fluid, or gear fluid, I should say, coming out, uh, that's when you know you've got enough in there. So that'll be a, a, a spring, late spring project for me. Um, I'll, I'll probably do a video on it. I believe we'll start off here. I'm gonna have to, to get this subframe off. I'm gonna have to uh, move my tires a little bit. Uh, there is a pin back here that you really can't get all the way out unless the uh, tire is turned. Um, so I've gotta rotate the tires to the left uh, to create some room. But the first thing be will be take the uh, hydraulic hoses off. Uh, I keep a rag with me on those. Uh, get them cleaned down, cap them immediately, uh, wrap all this stuff up. Uh, then it'll be to just drop this thing for now. The one thing you want to do is you want to release the pressure in the uh, lines here. So just take your joystick here kind of rotate it around into all the different positions and just release that pressure that's probably more than enough that I just did and we'll just start taking this off one by one here and capping them as we go I hope you guys can see this So far everything's nice and clean as it should be. If not, I'd be taking my rag and uh, trying to clean it up a little bit. But these popped off nice and easy. Uh, didn't really lose any fluid, so that's great. Now I just gotta work these out one at a time. Okay, hose number one, and also the, uh, the electrical for the hydraulic diverter uh, so that I could have the uh, chute rotator, and, you know, hydraulically set up and the deflector hydraulically set up.
Okay, so those are all done. For now, I am gonna cap these because I don't want any dust or junk getting in them. From here, we're gonna go in and we're gonna disconnect the PTO shaft on the front part of the snowblower. So that'll be next. And then like I said, I'll probably have to power this on. I gotta move the wheels so that I can uh, get, the, um, get the pin out of the subframe. And then this will all be able to just come off. Okay, that's disconnected now. I'll just leave that kind of sitting on the side here. And let's see, the next step here, I believe, we'll take the pin out, unlock it, and that should allow us to back out of here. And uh, I'm going to stick a little wood chalk under there just because I know as I, as I go under, or as I start to back out, uh, this piece is going to is going to want to lean backwards a little bit more. Protrudes out and connects to the snowblower is actually not level with that. So I think I'll raise it up um, just so that it's level when I go to actually take this thing off. Uh, so here's your subframe. Everything connects in. Here's your PTO shaft. I hope you can see it okay. I, I really don't have any way of looking at this live video because I'm just not that talented yet at knowing uh, ways to do it. I know I can have my cell phone out and look through the cell phone finder, but part of this is just making sure I do the right things. But back here is where you'll disconnect. There's some play in this bar so I can pull it out, move it forward, then yank it backwards again and take that bar out. The next thing is this little pin right here um, which as I'm looking at it doesn't look like it ever was on there all the way or fell off a little bit but the pin didn't move uh, didn't pop out luckily I guess that's one of those things I should look at uh, periodically during the winter but yeah this pin will come out hopefully it'll uh, come out easy I can just uh, Loosen up the front, I'm guessing. Pull the pin out. Um, or I don't loosen up the front and I pull the pin out first. I'll try that first and then I'll loosen up the front. And once that's taken out, 
Uh, I do believe that'll just kind of flop down a little bit and I'll be able to lift the front off. I, I'm guessing this is somewhere around 70, 80 pounds. Uh, just by guessing, they had this pretty much all set on uh, when I did do my uh, delivery and pickup. So we will start with disconnecting this PTO shaft and then try to get rid of the subframe. Okay, not sure what you're gonna see here and I'm not sure I'm talented enough to do this one-handed but I'm gonna try. Okay, so that's out. There's your mid PTO. Uh, it is well greased. Um, set that down here. And then, oopsie doodle, turn this around. This is just gonna pull out. And there's your shaft, all disconnected. So we'll get this out of here. I will now uh, attempt to take that pin out and remove the subframe. Okay, pin is out. Let's see how this is gonna go. Okay, real slick. Wasn't much of a problem at all. On top of the snowblower too. Try to keep all that stuff together. This thing is set in there pretty good, not gonna lie. Okay, that's loosened right up now. Uh, you've got to remember, you need to disconnect the hydraulic hoses. Got another visitor, my twin daughters, it's spring break here, so they're home, music's thumping. I don't think they wanted to be on camera. I didn't even get a hi dad or anything. Okay, it's pretty heavy. Uh, I'll remember to wear steel toe boots the next time. Uh, that was close. Uh, just kind of popped off uh, a little bit easier than when I had my BX. So I'm going to get that stuff out of the way. Lighting is going to be a little bit tough in here. Uh, but I'm just going to try to get this in position. 
Uh, snow blower and subframes all unhooked. I'll take care of the maintenance on that after. Uh, this is just going to be the biggest challenge, I know it is. And by the way, that subframe, when I took a guess at about 70, 80 pounds, it feels like it's probably about 150 pounds. But anyway, that dolly's going to come in handy. Okay, we're up close and personal. All right. So, that uh, is gonna be my challenge. I'm really hoping, although it's not looking good that I could have uh, taken this and hooked it up um, at that height, but I don't see how it's gonna be possible. The only way I could do it would be to try to uh, activate the hydraulics and lower the boom and I won't be able to lower the boom because I've got the, the stands right there so looks like the next step is really actually going to be to to uh, get this um, loader off the uh, dolly um, and that is a difficult one person job so I may mess around if I feel like I can do it great but I'm not so sure that I'll be able to. Okay, that was not fun. I suppose if I, I just have to do this one time a year, well, technically twice, it won't be, uh, it won't be the end of the world. And uh, I'll remember to have my friends over for a couple of beers. It would go a lot easier, I'm sure. Now I'm going to reverse this camera around and uh, let's see if I'm even going to be close with this. One thing you want to remember to do is leave yourself some room to hook all your hydraulic lines back up. I uh, pulled up enough to see if I was lined up properly and then I just brought it back. The other thing I'll say uh, for, for those of you that have, have may have gone from a BX to a larger tractor style um, is with the three speed gearbox, um, especially if you're doing some of this uh, you know, work where you've got to be pretty gentle with the gas and and feather things in, at least for me as being a beginner with this, 
Um, I'm definitely not in high range. I'm operating in, in medium range right now. Uh, I notice when I'm in high range uh, that sometimes when you're trying to just do the little bit of feathering on the uh, on the, the pedal to go forward or backwards, it'll actually jump a little bit, like it's just, just ready and raring to go. So dropping that down medium or even maybe low for, a, for doing something like this um, might, might help you out if you're in a similar situation um, where you got to be real accurate with where you want to stop and what you want to do. I'm going to uh, start my way from the bottom and work my way to the top here. Seems like that makes the most sense. As I can tell you, it gets a little bit, a little bit tricky uh, space-wise, especially if you're not used to dealing with it, and your your hands are all slippery, or your gloves. Uh, I'm trying to cap these again, right as I'm doing them. That way, you can keep your hydraulic lines clean and uh, away from having to break. Three down, one to go. I was thinking they'd get easier as they go up, but actually quite the opposite. Being all new, I guess maybe things could be a little bit stiff. Okay. Well, I got those all hooked up. All the covers are on. Now we'll have a little bit of fun with the, uh, trying to get the loader on. We'll see how this all goes. Stick around. Okay, I think I'm close. See how it goes. That side's a little tight. Not completely there yet. Made if you just a slight adjustment. Let's see how close we are with this side. All right, that that side's in perfect. Maybe it's a little jiggle on the boom, and this one will be too. I mean, it's it's close to being there.
back out. It's not all over in my garage. We'll get it lifted up. Walk the uh, stands up. And then this part is pretty much done. Uh, it's a brand new bucket and loader, so probably doesn't need grease, but just in case, I'm going to do it again. beginner like me all I'm doing now is uh, these stands when you put them into the parked position and, and you're storing it there's little stands that come down they'll have a little cotter pin I'm hoping that I'm getting this angle right uh, this just uh, slides out comes up in and then I'll stick a pin in right here and that's it so this baby is ready for action like I said I am gonna grease it um, I'll maybe do another video where I more focus on that. I don't want to make this one any more painful for, for people. Although you may be having a good, good laugh over it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this cover that's over the chain drive. Uh, I want to get that out of there. Uh, it says right here, stop the engine before lubricating. Lubricate the chain every four hours with chainsaw lubricant. Um, that's not what they recommended to me. I, I've heard other people say like a marine based lithium grease. Uh, and then when I picked this up for delivery and went through the whole uh, orientation, they recommended um, a spray called fluid film. Um, that's this stuff right here. I don't know how well you can see it. But it says powerful rust and corrosion protectant. It says penetrant and lubricant. Protects all metals. Linoleum based. Superior lubricant. No solvents. Long lasting, non toxic, non hazardous. So I'm going to do what they said. Uh, my dealer adds on warranties uh, to everything. I think I got an extended two year warranty on all my implements. So, we'll go about taking this off, we'll spray that down, then I'll grab the uh, grease gun and I'll just hit up the, uh, the different um, parts, the auger, uh, the bar, the, the shaft, and all the uh, universal joints. Um, and they, they do, I mean this, like I said, I've only run this for probably a total of about two hours, so everything should be well greased, but I'll, I'll hit it anyways, what the heck. This is a, a half inch bolt that I'll be taking out. Since I have the little straw that goes with this, I shouldn't have to take anything else out. I'll just give it a good spray. Uh, you can see where I've sprayed it multiple times before. Um, I just made it a habit of just giving it a little squirt through the top hole here and just assumed that uh, I was getting most of the chain or some of the chain every time I went. It would be in a different position. But since we're putting it away for the winter, 
cross our fingers hope we'll spray it on down there nice and simple Hey buddy, I've got my helper with me. I don't think it's anything you can eat, so you're probably not interested. Okay, back up. I don't want you to get grease on you. Okay, back up. Good boy, back up. Okay, and back on. I guess they left me a present. Uh, <laughs> inside the guard here was a wrapper for a Hershey's milk chocolate bar. Maybe that's the uh, Tex way of finding out if people are actually doing everything he said. I'm going to mention it to him and say, I don't know if you intentionally did it, but I found a Hershey wrapper sitting in there. Um, it was greased up and tucked down in the corner, so hmm, who knows? There, that's not going anywhere. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to go on that dolly that I made. And the, the dolly, I'm by far a beginner in any aspect when it comes to a lot of this stuff. And I tried to find the strongest, shortest casters I could to build that thing. And I used two by fours. Um, you know, probably could have gone with like a two by six or something maybe even stronger but it, i mean it held that loader just fine um i'm hoping it's going to do the same with this uh, i'm hoping this is actually going to be a little bit easier to uh to put on but since i didn't have any beer none of my friends would come over to help me so i'm going to try to do this uh, by myself the way that i took the loader off uh the dolly by myself we'll see how it goes wish me luck Okay, guys, and girls, if you're watching, this is the final product. I had to move things around a little bit. Um, I didn't end up having to call any friends or get any beer, although my wonderful wife did buy some beer for me, so I will be having a couple of those tonight. Um, the problem was I couldn't figure out how to lift this thing and get get the dolly underneath it. Same kind of issue I had when I was doing the loader. Um, then I thought, okay, well, you have a tractor with a loader. Why don't we put it to use? So I was able to actually get the loader underneath where the snowblower attaches to the subframe. And I was able to lift it up a little bit there, which then balanced it out so I could lift up and put cinder blocks underneath, slide my dolly in, and then lower it down. So this is it. Uh, I'll give you a shot of the back here, kind of how I did it. So you can see that it's supported nice. It's sitting there. I can wheel this around pretty easily. I can fit my... Silverado back here. Um, it's tight. I'll be using my backup camera. Uh, the subframe and the PTO bar is all packed away back here nice up off the cement. Uh, I did grease everything. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it is all greased. The auger is all greased. Everything is good to be sitting here for hopefully not having to use it again this year. Um, I'm pretty much at the point where I will come out every two inches and back scrape with the tractor and use the bucket to get the stuff out of here. But 
this is the final product. Okay, this is a uh, wrapping up today's project of switching over the loader, taking off the snow blower, um, and it was an adventure. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video. I thought I had the loader all hooked up right. The pins were all in. I'm not even sure how this is possible, but uh, the loader was not sitting on the frame completely. It was sitting just on top of where the, I guess the U connection would be, where the loader fits in and, and attaches to the frame. So I backed out, operated it somewhat normal, didn't even think about it. And when I wanted to use the loader to help lift up the snowblower, I could only put the, the loader down to about a point where it was a foot and a half away from the ground and it was all the way in the down position. And I could not figure that one out. Uh, I'm going, what's wrong with this thing? And I went and looked and sure enough, that loader wasn't sitting in the U position. I'll, I'll take a quick walk down here and tell you what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, that created a whole different thing. Uh, that was an adventure, trying to prop it up and, and get it set back. Uh, you know, I could get one pin out, but all the weight was on the other pin and I just didn't want to damage anything. Um, maybe you techies would know what uh, all this stuff is called, but this part right here was sitting on just the top, which I didn't realize because my pin matched up, which was odd to me. So that was on both sides and uh, trying to get that off was pretty, pretty tough. I thought I could manhandle it and push it on. That wasn't happening. The cylinder right here was completely closed so I couldn't get any movement backwards or, or forward or I mean, it was, it was something else. Um, but, oh well, when you're a beginner, you're a beginner. And we got it on. I was able to use the loader to, to get some, some man hands, some extra hands, however you want to say it, uh, to lift up the snow blower and put it on my dolly. So everything is all set, put away. Uh, this was quite a learning experience. Um, I hope everybody got a few laughs. Um, I'm actually chuckling about it. I'm not upset. So with that being said, hope you have a good night. Uh, hope you learned something if you're new like me. And hope you'll keep watching the videos. Um, it's an adventure. It's a learning experience. Someday I hope that uh, I'll be able to pass on some, some meaningful knowledge. I'll make all the mistakes and just do it all right and you can follow those videos. If you like the uh, video, you know, I'd appreciate a little thumbs up on that. Subscribe. I will try to keep doing these. Uh, I will keep trying to learn. Thanks folks.